Here's another picture of, of their peaceful valley home. This was taken at a meeting they hosted of, of bankers. Um, and in the house, Mrs. Lonsdale collected a uh, wonderful collection of china and coin glass, which she later gave to the town. Now, just out of college, John Jr. wanted to help the state of Arkansas. And he decided uh, he needed to convince the country that Arkansas just wasn't full of hips and wasn't a hillbilly state like the image was. So he went to Governor Carl Bailey and said he'd like to travel around the country and, and tell people that. Governor Bailey said that's a great idea. So in 1939, in this wonderful car, a red convertible Buick Roadmaster Phaethon, he went to all the states. He met every governor. He gave many speeches. He, gave, uh, he was interviewed on the radio. And he always gave the message about what a wonderful place Arkansas was. His license plate read, Arkansas Goodwill Ambassador. He traveled 24,000 miles and ended up at the New York World's Fair. Here's another picture of him with his license plate. He's a handsome young man, wasn't he? The governor of Utah liked this car so much that he drove around his state capital three times in it. And in Cheyenne, Wyoming, the car was mistakenly reported stolen, and John Jr. was stopped four times by the state police before he could get out of Wyoming, and each time he had to convince them he hadn't stolen his car. He arrived in New York at the fair on Arkansas Day, and the car was a sensation. Governor Bailey was up there with his wife and daughter, and they sat in the big red car as it passed in review before an escort of honor. So he had a lot of fun as the Goodwill Ambassador for Arkansas. It was his idea, and he did it all at his own expense. He loved to meet people. Here he is with, anybody recognize who he's with there? George Rapp. With George Rapp, uh, who visited Hot Springs occasionally because he was a good friend of Oni Madden, the retired gangster here. Uh, in his book, Leo and Vern, Orville says that John was a bit of a playboy, uh, and here he is in December 45 outside the Majestic Hotel, and he's welcoming uh, movie star Alan Ladd and his wife. They were among the first guests to uh, stay at the Majestic after it reopened. It and three other hotels downtown had been taken over by the Army in 1944, and part of 45 as part of that redistribution station where returning GIs stayed. Uh, so he, he seemed to always show up when there was some big event going on or some celebrity to meet. One way he tried to revive the town was by building the Colony House in 1940. He personally designed this building, which was advertised as the South's complete entertainment center. He designed it along the lines of a miniature Madison Square Garden. The facility contained convention and theater facilities for a city the size of Little Rock in a community that in 1940 had just 240 residents. It became a popular destination for people in the nearby communities. It was three stories, had four foot thick walls, sun decks on the second floor at each end of the building, and a 24 foot tower there it is after construction was complete. Over 1,500 people could fit into the auditorium to see movies or stage plays. When the portable uh, seats were whisked away, the auditorium was the scene of indoor tennis, roller skating, basketball, boxing, wrestling, dancing, and on Sundays, sometimes, community sing-alongs. Uh, John Jr., said, it may not prove profitable for me, but the town will always have it. Here's another view of it. It opened on July 4th, 1940. And here's the entrance. Uh, in Leo and Vern, Orville says that John Jr. had envisioned it originally, though, as a gambling 
casino, but could never get the okay from the powers that be in Garland County to let it be a gambling hall. And he also couldn't get the people of Lonsdale to go along with that either. <coughs> so then he turned it into a movie theater and a this and a that. And uh, each of these ideas, Orville said, surged with interest at first. Then when attendance decreased, he moved on to the next project and eventually tried to turn it into a beer tavern and a dance hall all over the objections of his neighbor. So uh, it, it seems to have a checkered history. But when the club opened, hopes were really high for it. And here he is outside the Arlington downtown in that cowboy outfit uh, on a publicity ride through the town to publicize the grand opening, which coincided with July 4th and a big celebration they had called Pioneer Days. And here he is presenting a ten-gallon hat, excuse me, ten-gallon hat to Mayor Leo McLaughlin uh, to invite him to Pioneer Days. Now, the lady there is on the cover of this. We have a copy of the uh, the program for that, which which is really cool. She was like the the queen of the Pioneer Days. So why don't y'all pass that around and take a look at it? Okay, the Missouri Pacific Line ran special trains to Lonsdale for the grand opening of the Colony House and the Pioneer Day celebration on July 4th through 6th, 1940. Ten gallon hats and women wore Mother Hubbards as they watched mule and horse races on the main street and attended a rodeo and a carnival. At the Colony House, they saw Birth of a Nation in the afternoons and then took part in square dancing, followed by jitterbugging and swing dancing. An estimated 10 to 15,000 people showed up as Lonsdale Mayor G.W. Steely's wish for a celebration that was noisy but sober was fulfilled. So the Colony House was off to a grand start. They did have one disappointment. One of the candidates for governor that year had promised to parachute down into the celebration, but he, he, uh, well, he chickened out at the last minute. Here are some of the women of Lonsdale dressed for the Pioneer Day celebration, and we have the names of many of these women. And here are the men of Lonsdale dressed up as their pioneer forefathers. There's John Lansdale, who's in the front row. And here are the men and women together in front of the colony house. And a part of the fun, they found a man, they, they had a contest sort of, and they chose a man they declared the oldest pioneer. His name was Waddle Benton. He was 91, and they made a big deal about him. There's John Lonsdale on the right, Jr., in the cowboy suit, and the man with the tie thing draped around his neck is John Lonsdale, Sr. And here's John Lonsdale, Sr. again at, at one of the festivities there. Aren't those hats great? <laughs> Sometimes John even performed at the Colony Club. Here he is on the right directing the Colony House Ambassadors, their house band. Most of the time, of course, life in Lonsdale was relatively quiet and people enjoyed normal things like this 1939 meeting at the Lonsdale Methodist Church, with this building no longer exists. There was Now, there was some excitement at a church meeting in Lonsdale in November of 1922. During a Wednesday night church service, 30 robed and hooded Ku Klux Klansmen appeared and announced to the startled congregation that they were going to wage an all-out war against moonshiners and bootleggers. Now, they showed up at a Another church meeting the next night in Marble Township, and three moonshiners opened fire with rifles and shotguns and killed one of them and wounded two others. They, they got away from, from Lonsdale unscathed, though. Well, were there a lot of moonshiners in the Lonsdale area? Would you guess yes or no? Yes. 
Well, in 1920, a state prohibition officer declared that Garland County is the worst in the state in whiskey stills. And he stated that Lonsdale manufactures more liquor than any other part of Garland County. So according to him, it was sort of the top spot in the state for stills. And he went on to say that it furnished a lot of the liquor for Little Rock. We know the stills are down there, but we've been unable thus far to locate them. Now, John Lonsdale Sr. died of a heart attack in 1943. And John Lonsdale Jr. was killed in a car accident in 1952. In 1954, his mother sold the colony house and its nearby lake and donated considerable adjacent property to the Arkansas Baptist Assembly. The property is now Spring Lake Camp. The colony house building eventually burned. In its glory days, it was the place to be for Hot Springs High School students who wanted to have fun on a Saturday. And for a time, it was the heart of the community of Lonsdale. Lonsdale lost its train depot when the Missouri Pacific ended passenger service in 1964. According to today's Lonsdale Mayor Steve Snellback, Lonsdale currently has no businesses and functions as a bedroom community for Little Rock and Benton and Hot Springs. In the census of 2000, it had 94 residents. In addition to Spring Lake Camp, Lonsdale is home to the Lonsdale Baptist Church, a city hall, a post office, a fire station, which houses the Lonsdale Volunteer Fire Department, and a 10-acre park with a basketball court, walking trails, and pavilion. And children from Lonsdale attend the Benton School District. Well, once a farming community, once a railroad town and a lumber town, uh, and a town that was in large part the private fiefdom of a wealthy and benevolent family, Lonsdale is smaller and quieter now. But um, the sense of family and community spirit shown in this 1939 photo, I hope, still endures. Oh, and I didn't mean to show this one, but these are the St. Louis graves of uh, the Lonsdale family with John on the far right. Thank you very much. I'm sure that some of these fine folks from Lonsdale would like to ask you a question or tell you something about their